Hey guys, so we're gonna do a quick little photo shoot with these trees right here with the flowers and What we did before I tried to do it on an iPhone and we were like in a median and it didn't work out well because she did not commit but um, We decided to find some other trees that are not in the middle of a road a busy road So it'd be a lot easier to to shoot, but I'm shooting on my 55 1 8 and the new Sony a7 III so we'll see how it is. Um, what I'm gonna try to do, what I did with the iPhone is when we were in the median, is I had a tree branch in front of her um, that was kind of out of focus. I was using portrait mode and then with the trees in the background. So it's just, it's like really cool. Cause she's wearing this white, this white outfit and with the, uh, the uh, with the white on white, it should look very cool. So yeah, I'm gonna shoot at 1.8 to get a uh, crazy depth of field and blow everything out except for her to be in focus. We actually tried to come out here before and it was too sunny outside. It was, the sun was way too high so it was creating deep shadows because I'm shooting up at her and since she's looking down, it created really bad raccoon eyes. So we decided to come back out here when it was either sunset or overcast. Right now it's kind of a mix but there's no hard shadows anywhere. It's really, really soft light and that's what I really like. And for here, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I might actually try to position her here. I, I don't really like breaking off the tree branches, especially if it's not my property or anything like that, or if I'm on somebody's property, but I may have to break like a little flower off just so that I can hold it in front of the lens and have more control. But what I'm gonna have her do, let's have you stand right here. And we'll shoot up and through the flowers. So it should look really cool. There he goes guys, breaking a branch. <sighs> So I did break a little branch. We are going to move a little bit. I'm going to place her in front of this tree. You'll see. Because it's not really it's not really working out to the way I wanted it or how I shot it on an iPhone before. Maybe I should just use iPhone. Let's see. Right now what I'm trying to do is trying to find the happy medium because I don't really want the background to be in crazy focus, nor this. So. I'm playing with her distance to the background, so I pulled her away from it to get um, to blow out the background a little bit more. Typically, what I like to do too, um, I like to have the models really play with their hair, kind of play around, and keep moving because when you stay static, um, things really start to get uh, stale because the model kind of gets bored. When you play play around with the distance with the with the flowers to the lens, um, you can see it in the live view when it, when you shoot with this one of these cameras. But on another camera, you, when looking through the viewfinder, you can kind of see it too. And what I typically like to do too with people that don't have a lot of experience, I like to just kind of shoot a lot and just have them move around, because I'm just looking for the one photo. Um, people with experience, um, they will kind of hit poses and you, you'll wait for them. Everybody's different. You kind of find your rhythm. I really don't like ramping off pictures a lot because it takes a while to find the photo you want because you're only looking for a couple, but yeah. So what she wants, because we were reviewing the photos, what she wants, she wants, this was like really out of focus. And so to get it in more focus, you have to bring it closer to the model. So now what I'm gonna do uh, to try to get this a little bit more focused in front of the lens, I'm gonna use my iPhone. Since we already tested it out before on the iPhone, we're gonna try to get it and see how it is. We can also compare the photos to see how it is. I'm using the iPhone 7 Plus in portrait mode. Portrait mode is gonna give similar results to how 50 millimeter is. So we'll see how it turns out. So these are actually turning out a lot better uh, or like how we intentionally wanted. This is gonna be two different styles which is going to be cool. Good. And typically now that we have a little bit of sunlight coming over, I want to keep her facing the sunlight. If she faces away, her face is going to be in shadow and I'm not sure how the iPhone is with dynamic range, but the sun is pretty low. It's around sunset time, so she's not getting any raccoon eyes. So it's giving her like a nice little highlight. The one thing I've noticed with portrait mode is that since it's using two lenses, it takes a little bit to try to focus. So it's a little bit hard to kind of like hurry up and try to get a shot. But if you can get that shot in focus, 
or if you can get it with the depth effect, it really helps. And I really like this portrait effect because since the 50 mil is my favorite on an actual camera, it's a similar effect with this phone. So we'll see how it turns out in the edit. Okay, so here we are in the edit and looking through the photos and stuff like that, it performed like a regular camera. I don't see anything extraordinary and I don't see anything bad. I, it performed just like how a camera performed. I'm not gonna pixel peep or anything like that. I'm just gonna use it and just see how it is. But I'm gonna go into detail on how I edited this specific photo. They are all pretty much the same. Um, I may adjust some things from here and there, but I apply the same kind of preset amongst all of them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to create a duplicate copy and reset it and you can see the raw image here. It is a little bit warmer and it is a little bit underexposed, but if you look at the histogram, I kept all the detail. And what I've found on Sony cameras is that I like to underexpose a bit just because I don't think it can handle highlights that well. It just, on the skin tones, it just doesn't look right to me. So this is how I end up shooting. So the first thing I usually do is I adjust my exposure. So we'll go up to about 1.2. And then now I can see it's a little bit warm. My photos are a little bit cooler, so I will adjust the white balance a little bit. I'll go to about, I think I put about 5,000. We'll check the previous photo. 4950, so we'll just do that. And then typically what I do is I'll boost my shadows. Probably a lot, um, just, to, just to taste. And then since it's also looking a little bit flat, I'll increase contrast. In the previous photo, we were at plus 20. Looks like I adjusted my tint a little bit to six. Uh, it just adds a little bit magenta. I found Sony cameras might be a little bit green, but especially if I change the white balance and exposure, the tint may be a little off. And then here's the tricky part that I'm not gonna go into detail, but I use curves to color all of my photos and, and add contrast and all of that. So typically what I do is I'll start on green if I feel like there's a weird magenta and green shift that tint usually can't solve. So in this photo, I didn't touch it and then I'll work my way to red and I'll adjust my reds and then I'll work my way to blue and then adjust my blues and then I'll start adding in contrast using the RGB curve. I'm not going to go into detail like I said before on how to use curves. It's just this is what I grew up learning. I will make a video on how to use curves and why I use it and why I like it a lot. It just gives me a lot more control in what I'm trying to do. And I'll typically add green but in these photos I didn't. I add green just because it kind of gives it more of that film look, but that's pretty much it with that edit. I mean, it looks very simple, but curves is what's doing everything here. So if I turn curves off, you can see what it's doing there and turn, turn it back on. So it's adding in contrast. It's adding a little bit of color into it. Yeah, there's green here, but she's in nature. She's in plants, so that's okay. But yeah, now let's move on to the iPhone edit. So on iPhone, the app of choice to edit for me is Visco or VSCO. I'm pretty sure everybody knows it and everybody uses it, but I'll go into one of these photos and I honestly like these photos a lot more better than the Sony. It's not because of the editing, it's because of the depth. I think on the Sony, I, at 1.8, it was too blurry, so you couldn't see the flower in the foreground or in the background. Everything just kind of looked like a white blobby mess, and I just wanted to see a little bit of detail. And in order to fix it on my Sony, I should have shot at maybe like a 3.2. I would have to play around with that, but in here, I'll show you what I did with my editing. I'll show you the before and after. Let's see. If I hold it, there's before. That's after. Before. After. Typically, what I do is I don't put a filter on first, so let's disable that, and I'll mess with the settings first. So first I'll adjust exposure, and here I put it out 2.4, as you can see it's just kind of dark there. So 2.4 was kind of, kind of good for me. And then I'll up the contrast, and then I'll go straight over to shadows to boost my shadows again to 5.6, because when the shadows are boosted I just need a little bit more contrast. And there's no curves in here. There's apps out there that I can use curves, but I'm just so used to Visco right now that I like it. And then I'll go over to sharpen. I'll add a bit of sharpening to taste to what I like to see. And then clarity, add a little bit of clarity in there. And with clarity, what I've noticed is that if you wanna add clarity, you have to make sure you boost your shadows because clarity kind of like makes your shadows just funky. It just really like deepens that. I don't 100% know exactly what's going on. I just know when somebody uses clarity and I can see it, it just looks weird. Just a little bit with a little bit of boosted shadows looks good. And it really depends on if how bright the highlights are, but sometimes I'll bring them down in here, but I like the brightness of them. 
and then I'll go into temperature and like I said I like my photos a little bit cooler and so that was at negative nine and here was when it was uh, what it was shot at tint I'll adjust if I feel like there's a magenta or green cast to it but in here there wasn't and then I'll add a little bit of green too looks like I put 3.7 in here as you can see just a little bit and then I'll go into shadow tint and highlight tint I'll do highlight tint I just feel like it just helps me a little bit better just to do highlights first I don't know why but what I'll do is I'll cycle through all of these and they'll be of course at 100% so I'll just kind of go through them and just see which one I like the best and I think I like the blue the best it just felt right to me with editing it's just all about what feels right I forgot exactly what the, I put that at but and then I'll go into shadows and it looks like I added more blue to it I just like my blue tones it just all felt right to me and then I think that's it. Fade, I don't typically add fade if I'm really messing with the shadows and the contrast. It just makes your blacks not black. It just brings them up to gray, and I don't really like that. And then I'll go into filters after I do make those edits, and then I'll just kind of cycle through. I'll typically use these numbered ones. Um, it gives a little bit of a film kind of feel. And then I'll typically use the A ones, or the analog, I think it's called. A6, I think, is a popular one. ACG is pretty cool. And then C1 and C2 are typically what a lot of people use too. And then of course I've bought a lot of filters, but honestly don't like a lot of them. HB1 and HB2 are pretty cool. But then also I think my other favorite ones are the S's. So I'll just typically go through and just see which one I like the best and just remember. Like S3 is actually pretty decent. So that's pretty much it in terms of that. I'm gonna discard changes just to see. So here's the, the photo before. One thing that I've noticed with portrait mode on iPhone is that since you're having weird depth in here, sometimes the edges will look a little bit messed up, like as you can see in her hair here. But I mean, for Instagram and stuff like that, it's fine. Even professionally, like these will be acceptable for me. A client can pay me to shoot photos like this. Of course, if I bring out an iPhone, they may sound like I'm crazy. But like I said, I really like these iPhone pics a lot better and you can get good results with iPhone. It's, it's surprising, I know. You don't need an expensive camera, but you can. So I hope you really enjoyed that video because I showed you that you can get good results with an iPhone and you don't need an expensive camera even though an iPhone is pretty expensive. But anyway, that was my girlfriend that I was shooting and I want to thank her for letting me shoot her and show her face and all of this. But she also has a YouTube channel and if you want to see her channel, the link will be in the description below or up in this corner over here. It's over here. But thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.